Andreas, what would prompt the body to develop cancer cells? That's a very good question. It's basically, if you take it you know, back to the cellular level, you'll find that every cancer cell is a cell that has been deprived of oxygen. Deprived of oxygen, yes. so then it's anaerobic? It becomes partially anaerobic to begin with, and eventually it can be totally anaerobic. Okay. That means you, once a cell is deprived of 35% of its oxygen requirements, mm -hmm. the cell will go through a, a biochemical change and that would include that the cell, instead of using oxygen to, to metabolize glucose, which is the principal nutrient for every cell. Mm -hmm. So instead of you know, metabolizing it the normal way using oxygen, the body will, or the cells have to ferment the glucose, the sugar. Oh, really? And okay. so a, a cell that is fermenting glucose will produce uh, substances like lactic acid okay. um, that is a very, very caustic you know, acid that changes or attacks the nucleus of the cells and it cr exposes the, the DNA to you know, damages that are you know, requiring it to adjust to a new style of functioning that l has to learn to live without oxygen or less oxygen. And so when that is sort of happening for a, a number of cells, you would eventually develop a tumor. But tumors don't you know, appear, they don't show up unless you already have cancer for at least three to five years. So you don't notice them. You, you, you may have about two billion cancer cells in the body and you don't notice that. And it's only when you have like three billion cells, suddenly you may have a little speck of a tumor somewhere and the doctor say, oh, we found a cancer, let's get rid of it. All right. And they don't get rid of the two billion cancer cells that are still lurking in different parts of the body. If they become three billion in another part of the body, they call it metastases. Mm -hmm. Or the cancer has spread from here to there, even though they said we got it all. Okay, so you're saying what would prompt the body to, to develop cancer cells would be lack of oxygen. That because is, you say they are healthy cells that are, have become mutated. Yes, so they're basically healthy cells that uh, used to be you know, nourished, get enough oxygen, enough nutrients, mm -hmm. enough glucose, enough of everything. Now, once you, you uh, cut them off, the, the proper oxygenation, oxygen supply, and that happens because of suffocation. So there is a buildup of metabolic waste products such as okay. uric acid, urea, ammonia, lactic acid mm -hmm. in the cell environment um, or dead cells that haven't been removed. You know, every day the body turns over 30 billion cells so you have to get rid of 30 billion, you, know, you, know, you have to get rid of the 30 billion dead cells. These are corpses that if they are not removed they are being attacked either by bacteria um, or eventually fungi when they're you know, dead or if they're damaged cells and a bacteria attack them and fungi or fungi attack the dead cells. So then you have a toxin produced from those things, mycotoxins, um, that could be nitrosamines which are carcinogens. Mm -hmm. So nitrosamines are the most powerful kind of carcinogens the human body can produce when there's decay going on, when you decompose your own body. So when, when that happens, the irritation is enormous uh, to the cells. So they get bombarded uh, with you know, poisons and in order to you know, learn to absorb them and to accommodate them in a safe environment away from the bloodstream, the body will develop tumor, uh, your, your mm -hmm. tumor cells or cancerous cells so that the body is safe. So, it so prevents, that's the purpose of a tumor. That's why it's a survival to mechanism. Contain to these, contain uh, the poisons and the toxins and that are produced by the congested cells that can no longer breathe enough oxygen, that can no longer metabolize the way they are designed to. And so they are genetically changing to be able to, uh, cap to be capable of living in that toxic uh, environment and pull out the poisons from that environment, which otherwise would enter the bloodstream and cause septic shock, and the person would die very, very quickly. All right. so that's why cancer is a survival mechanism. It's not, 
a disease in itself, it's the body working with the tumor cells and in, in the cancer mm -hmm. uh, to prevent a disastrous outcome of the toxicity that has arisen. Wow, he put that very well. That, that makes me understand what you're saying. Mm. That it's not this malignant thing like you're saying, this, this tumor, it's actually survival. Yes, the tumor is only like the tip of the iceberg. Okay. And you, you cannot see the iceberg underneath. So what medicine does, it says, oh, there's a tumor, mm -hmm. the tip of the iceberg, let's chop it off, let's cut it out, let's get rid of the breast, mm, and then exactly. we got it all. And I now find that if you cut out one breast, you develop cancer on the other one too. And how does it happen? Well, they got all the cancer out there, so why does this one develop it too? So it's basically a system in the body that has, been not, has not received enough attention, that is the lymphatic system. And that is the garbage removal system that drains away the daily produce, produced metabolic waste products and the dead cell material that is all supposed to be carried away by the lymphatic system. You clog up the lymphatic system, you eventually get a buildup of those potentially toxic materials that then suffocate the, cell, the cells mm -hmm. uh, by filling the connective tissue, which is the fluid surrounding the cells, with toxins and waste matter. And then the cells can no longer breathe enough oxygen, and then you have the, the, the scenario that I described earlier. Thank you for that information. Thank you.